we're out at a pond, much similar to maybe something you have in your backyard or um, on your property. And one concerning issue that people have that I receive calls on is dealing with algae. There are a number of types of algae out there. There is the blue-green algae, which is known to produce a toxin. There is also filamentous algae, and I want to show you the difference between the two today. Um, first thing to know is algae is a microscopic plant. Um, when there is enough of it in abundance, it becomes available for you and I to see. Um, this plant, just much as a plant in, on the terrestrial environment does, this plant in the water will produce oxygen. This oxygen is a critical component, obviously, for fish, aquatic invertebrates. It's an important part of the water cycle. However, um, in some cases, you can have too much algae, and that can lead to some problems. First of all, <clears throat> what I tell people is, even though this algae we're looking at here may look a little bit unsightly, this is filamentous algae. I tell people, grab a stick and pick it up. If it has a texture to it, then it is it is a filamentous, it is non-toxic, it is harmless. Remember, I'm touching this, it has a texture, so it's, it's harmless, okay? That is the filamentous algae. Um, can be kind of a nuisance. One way to control the filamentous algae is by hand raking. You can rake and remove the algae. Uh, if it's a smaller pond, if it's a larger pond and there's a lot of algae, you may want to consider using an aquatic herbicide such as uh, copper-based Qtrine Plus or um, also, there's uh, some diquat products out there that work as well. The, the blue-green algae, which is toxic, which is concerning, that particular algae will have a color as if somebody dumped a bucket of green paint in the water. It's a very bright green in coloration, and it's very viscous. So keep in mind as you're, as you're, as you're going out about your pond that algae is important. It, it is a, a critical component to the water and the environment but too much of it can be a problem. Another, another issue that you may have in your, in your backyard pond or the pond on your property is an overabundance of aquatic macrophytes or plants. Many of you will probably call them weeds. How do you identify a weed from algae? A weed's gonna have a root structure, it's gonna have leaves, it's gonna actually look more like a plant. The water gives the plant the rigidity and allows it to stand upright. Um, these types of plants, many plants can be controlled with a diquat based product or a fluoridone based product. A um, couple products on the market that are similar to those would be Sonar, which is fluoridone based, or Reward, which is a diquat based. There are other trade names out there as well. Um, another potential issue you may have is too much aquatic vegetation growing on the shoreline right around your pond. Many people are concerned with how do we treat that, make sure that we don't have problems in the pond. If you use an aquatic certified glyphosate based product, such as SureClear or Rodeo, um, look for glyphosate as the active ingredient. You can then spray that on your aquatic vegetation throughout the shoreline. Um, finally, one, one other uh, common concern is the small dots that you may have, and that is lemna or duckweed. They're very, very small plants that uh, grow in the water, and those plants can easily be controlled with reward or diquat. Remember, always stay ahead of the problem. Do not wait until the last minute before in July and August when the problem becomes so great that it's tough to treat. Follow all label directions. If you do that properly, you can avoid fish kills and problems.